Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We have a special guest. I don't think you've seen him before, but we've had a lot of conversations. Zoom meetings, that's what you do. Because you can't just fly over to England every day of the week. And fortunately, we're able to have Jake over here in the US today. He's with Wessex International. You can see these products behind us here. We have some cool stuff in store to show you. Some, you know, you know me. I like smart designs. I like feature rich products. These are no exceptions, so let's get to it. All right, so Jake, you know, let's get a little history, a little background on what Wessex is all about. I didn't know about the company until you reached out, but what I did with my research there, looking it up on your website, you guys, you've been around for a while. Yeah, thanks, Courtney. We're, we're firstly, just to start things off, um, we're really looking forward to kicking things off with, with Courtney and Good Works Tractors. Um, so, as you say, look, we're, we're a UK company, you can tell from my voice and my, my <laughs> accent, so that's, not, that's a bit of a giveaway. Um, it's great to be over here to see Courtney. But we've been talking a few times and, um, yeah. over a few months and we started selling some machines now. And, and um, we're, we're, we've been around for a while. We were established in 1962. Um, and we were, back then we were selling tractor attachments, um, so that was our, our thing. And we still sell a huge amount of uh, tractor attachments and big range. So in the UK where we have our manufacturing facilities, that is where we design and we test and we assemble and build everything uh, that you see here today. Um, so we're, we're, it's not a rebadged machine um, for us. This is, this is our own, it's in-house quality and in-house control, but we've expanded into Europe. Um, so a strong presence in Europe and then out beyond there, we, the Middle East and the East and then um, Australasia. Uh, South America and North America, we've, we've had some presence here for a, for a number of years. So particularly, um, what brought us to, Amer to the US was, was the Gulf and Turf market. So we have a, a dealer network covering about th 35 states um, in the US, so we're very well established, that's growing rapidly. What we're focusing on here today is our ATV, ATV products. So we've got a range of ATV mowers, but we've, we go beyond that as well with sweepers and things like that. So we started started ATV attachments in the 90s, 1990s. Um, so we've been at that for a while. Um, and we've still got machines, um, they're actually blue back then. Uh, so we've got blue machines, still 1990s models, still, still out there working. All right, folks, I want you guys to know more about these products that we're looking at, okay? So let's get into it. We have a slasher right here, and then we have a couple of flail mowers. Now there's actually three flail mower series that are pulled behind. We've got the, the high end and we have the, the base version there. There's another version in the middle, okay? That's not here, but we'll get you some, some footage of that and some, some specs on that too. So Jake, let's, let's start over here with the, uh, with the slasher. We'll, we'll go over this briefly, just the general construction of it, and then we'll get into the flail mowers after that. What do you, what do you got to tell us about this one here? Sure. So th this machine here um, is, a, is our, known as our AT110. It's a single bladed slasher. So it's typically used in from short to medium length grass. And then when we go into ATV flail mowers and our AF range, that's for your, for your medium to long. So this will give you a nice, nice finish on short grass, um, nice and light on the front end. So obviously with the wheels either side of the machine, it takes all the weight off the, um, off the drawbar. So it's nice and light there. So you can pull that not only just with an ATV, but a UTV, a four x four, a garden tractor, yeah. uh, ride on mower, uh, zero turn. Oh, yeah. You could put them on the back of anything that will really pull it. So you, you got a two inch bull hitch, drop it on there and you're, you're, you're away. Uh, you do have a, uh, a drawbar which can offset. So obviously you can see the crank here which comes here and changes angle. So you can actually undo the drawbar here with two hand wheels hmm. and then you can mount it on this side so it offsets it so you can get offset cut. Yeah, yeah, by a fence row or a, in a ditch bank, that kind of application there too. That's, That's really it. handy. Yeah. So nice and easy to change the height of height of cut. This this tool here, which when you've got it hitched up onto the back of the um, vehicle, then you just hook that underneath there and stand on it, and then that lifts the deck off, and you've got <laughs> uh, a pin you can pull out and just adjust the height, and off you go. So 20 seconds and you're you're, you're done. It's pretty quick action. So you've got um, on the top here, you've got Obviously, powering the unit is a Briggs & Stratton 12 and a half horsepower engine, recoil start. We've sold thousands of these units and they've been really reliable for us. And uh, that's why we've stuck with Briggs & Stratton across our whole range. Hmm. Now, 110, I'm assuming that, is that centimeters? That is 110 centimeters. Okay, yeah. all right, which, well, 
let's see, that's probably like 44 inches or somewhere around yeah, there. 43, that. 44, yep. something like that. So, okay, so matches up with the, about the width of most ATVs right around yep. there. So that's that's really good too. Probably, now is that the is that the mowing path or that, that's not the overall width of the- No, that's the cutting width. Yeah, okay, yep. all right, very good. And I see you got some guards there for the front in front of the tires there too. Yeah, so that if you've got a long grass, that just deflects it and pushes it around the wheel. So okay. you're not, yeah, so you're not trampling over it and laying the grass over. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, what's this right here? Okay, so this un unravels. Let me do that. And it is your throttle cable. So this clips on the back of your, your, your rack <laughs> um, of your, your ATV, so just behind your seat. And you, when you have this um, on idle, on takeover, and then you can just power up your, your revs and that engages okay. your, your blade underneath. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to just travel um, down a path or something, you can dis disengage it, but you leave it running. So the blade's not running and then you just get to your So the next section, you just fire it up again and off you go. Wow, very nice. You can get an extra long version if you've got a, a uh, your cat, your, your seat is much further away. All right, so Jake, so what, what's the intended use for this tool right here? So. Just to, just to give you a bit of an idea, I mean, the, the, the height of cut goes from two to six inches. Okay. So we're from, we're tip, it's a typical grass, grass application, but from short grass to medium length. Um, so that could be a, a grass that's foot, uh, foot and a half long. Um, hmm. If you go much more than that, then you want to be going flail mower. Um, but this is, it has a single blade on this. So the whole width is one blade and it's a very heavy, heavy blades. You can imagine when that's up and spinning, it's got a lot of momentum behind oh, yeah. it. So that does give it the versatility that, that you can cut short grass, but if you can power into long grass and it doesn't slow your engine down too much. Now this is the most affordable or economical option out of, compared to the flail mowers, right? And so you can get quite a bit of value yeah. and capability out of this for a bit of a lower price point. That's right, yeah. It's, it's, our, it's our lowest price point machine. Um, we do have other rotary mowers. Um, so this is, our, this is the AT range, and then we go up to the AR range, um, and we have two different widths on those, and that'll be a four foot and a five foot with three different bla three blades on there, and that's, that's for fine, fine uh, lawn finish. But this is our sort of entry level, great value machine, and very versatile. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, Jake, so let's go from, what would you? Did you call this a topper? This we call it a topper. <laughs> a topper. Let's go well, from a topper, a slasher. slasher, cutter, whatever. So we're gonna go from this unit over to the flails now. Now again, there's three different series. We have two of them here to show you today. But Jake, tell us what's the difference here? We're going from this style to a completely different looking machine. So give us a little bit of insight on that. Yeah, exactly. So um, obviously with a with a with a slasher, a ready cut, cutter, that's <laughs> that's cutting uh, horizontally. Whereas a flail mower, as Courtney well knows, is that the flail mower is cutting forwards and up and over, overturning rotor. So it's a completely different action of mowing. Um, flails, their, their, their intended use is for much longer, longer grass. So um, you could be taking this into, into grass, this long brambles, hmm. whatever really actually you can push over with the quad the bike, machine, yeah. this, these things will handle it. They are, they are, they are beasts. And the other thing about a, a flail mower is that as you go into the grass, it's obviously lifting it, it's cutting it, throwing it over the top. And as it goes over the top, it mulches in and gives you an even spread of clippings all the way hmm. across the width of the machine. So um, you're getting that a lot of material just shredded up yeah. and it spread, it spread nicely. So you don't get lines of, lines of grass like lying around, rows, yeah. which is going to take weeks to decompose. It just shreds it up and leaves it fine mulch yeah, yeah. that makes sense totally different yep okay jake so what are you gaining or losing if you go from from the slasher to the flail mower can you can you do the same kinds of work or is it completely different do you need both no you should, you shouldn't need both okay. the, the flail mower will cut down low okay um, probably not quite as low as as your rotary um but it'll cut down low two three inches um, and you can maintain it down low, but this does give you the ability to just go into those long overgrown areas and get them under control. So okay. um, 
is a is a great tool to have and they would outperform a lot of the tractor attachment yeah. flail mowers on the market i mean they are they are sturdy units let's let's go through I guess the general design and construction of these flail mowers, what do they have in common, you know, including the, the middle model that's that's not here right now? What do they all share in common, no matter what one a customer is looking at? Yeah, thanks, Connie. So you can probably see here, you can see that the deck design of, of both machines yeah. looks very similar, and they are the same. So the deck, the axle system, the drawbar system, um, and actually the, the rotor on the AFE and the AF, AFX are the same. So... Hmm. Um, yeah, they're built, still built with the same durability. Um, so just let's go into some of these features that they've all got. Yep. Um, the other thing is the tires, and I'll come on to that. So one really cool feature is the swing lock axle system. So as you can see here, you've got like a pivot bolt here. Um, what you can do with all of our ATV flower mowers is have it side wheel mounted like you've got here, um, or you can actually, with no tools and under two minutes, you can undo this and swing it round and have the, the wheel behind the machine um, within, the width, within the mowing width. So the benefit there, um, what, this is a, your typical mowing position yeah. um, because it, your, your, your wheels are either side of the deck so it's actually taking the weight of the drawbar and I'll show you, I mean they're, they're very light to pick up if that makes sense. So there's, no, there's hardly any weight on the, on yeah. the drawbar. Yep. So that's you don't want to weigh, weigh down the back of your ATV too much, mm -hmm. and that is your typical mowing application. But the trouble is, is that say if you've got a fence line, you can't get up close to it, um, so you can only come within a foot of the, the edge of the fence line. And it, so if you want to tidy up around the edge and um, clean up at the end of a job, there's actually no issue just to, okay, right, I'm going to put this in rear wheel mode, and this tire comes back round and it comes in within the width. It's nice and simple, and it's a patented design, so you, you, there's no other machine out there that's, yeah. that's got the equivalent. There are other, other units where you have to unbolt, and then it takes about 30 minutes to, to, to bolt it on the other way around. Um, so, and that's the, that's the difference between whether you want to do it on job or not. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you don't want to be sitting there every time, mm -hmm. just moving it from side to rear. Um, and this makes it so easy, you could just do it every time you cut your field. It's ingenious. I mean, it is absolutely awesome. No tools required. You can do it right in the field. I do have a, an odd question for you though. So say you want to do it along a fence line, you would still rotate both tires. You wouldn't do just one and That's then right. leave the other one on the side, right? Because that would, that would really throw some <laughs> dynamics off, right? That's so, right, yeah. Okay. So, so when, you, when you move it from the side to the rear, and maybe we'll do a, we'll do a shot of that and how easy it is, um, you do have to um, move the the pin position for the height adjuster to the rear because it has a different range of adjustment. So okay. when the wheel comes up here, you have to reset that range of okay. adjustment. So yeah. you can't just do one side or the other. Now, Jake, you mentioned this handle here too, kind of along those same lines because another toolless feature on here is the height adjustment, right? Mm. Very easy, so easy. I mean, Crazy. To, to change the height of, height of cut, you pull this pin, drop this handle, and then you get winding. So this going down, Look at that. Simple, simple. And then, say you're done there, just drop that handle back over, pop the pin in, job done. And there's a little, uh, you know, hash marks here and numbers and everything, so you can kind of find the height that works for you and get back to that yep. time and time again. That's it. Okay, Jake, I'm loving these toolless adjustments that you can make on these machines. I mean, really well thought out, but there's one more I know for sure that we haven't talked about yet up here on the tongue. Take us through that. Yeah, so at the top end of the, the draw bar here, so you've got this turn buckle here, which you can just back off with a quick turn. So that releases the drawbar, and then that means that then you can offset that to the left or to the right uh, to bring that out alongside your, your bike. So okay. that might be you're, you're going along a hedge line, yeah. and you've got, you've got some growth going on underneath your hedges, and you want to push, your, push this side out and get, yep. it, get it in there where you, can, yep. you can't get in because you've got branches coming Sweet. at you or things like that. Um, so Love it. It's a useful little feature that. And again, um, those are standard on, on no matter what series you get. That's right. Okay. It's the same, same drawbar, same, same system. And then the other thing here is you've got this turnbuckle on the top here. So depending on your height of your, your hitch, mm. so, and that you might have different vehicles, right? So yep. you, you might have an ATV with a, they tend to have pretty low uh, bull hitch on it. Um, so, but then you go to a, to a four by four and that could be a lot higher. Sure, yeah. So you want to run this machine as, as level as possible so the engine is, is upright, it does its best job like that. Okay. So um, if you've got a low, 
low hitch height, you can just angle this drawbar down, um, which then angles the and keeps oh, yeah. your keeps your deck perfect deck level, and vice versa. If it's a high one, just angle it up, um, so you keep your deck level. So that's really simple. It it's looks like, like a tractor top link. Is this a uh, a swivel? Yeah, so here it's, too? it's a breakaway hitch. Okay. So if if you um, if you happen to go on a bank and a bit to an extreme angle and something bad happened, right? So yeah. you you did you did um, flip it, and uh, let's hope you don't, right? But that that there is designed so that if it had enough force to to and it needed to turn then it, it would turn okay if that makes sense okay yep this is it's a safety, a, it's safety not, mechanism there. yeah it's not like a swivel but it's, it's a it's a breakaway hitch okay yes yeah, very good all right now there's a substantial difference on these tires on the flail mowers versus what's on the slasher yeah i mean these look special yeah <laughs> tell us about them <laughs> the first thing you see obviously is the size of them yeah um so they are a flotation tire um the applications of these to go in, they, there's there's a lot of people that use them in more boggy, marshy sort of areas. So having a having a flotation tire like this helps to ride and get through those sort of slightly damper areas. Yeah. And um, it you can travel over that nice and easy. Okay. If you're cutting reeds and things like that. Yep. Um, the other thing about this is really cool is that they are a Kevlar lined tire. So okay. Um, they are puncture, resist, puncture <laughs> resistant, right? So they're not puncture proof. Yeah. So they can actually get punctures, but they're gonna they're going to remove 80% of your punches wow. that you could with a standard tire. So cutting brambles and things like that, which a lot of these oh, things yeah. do, and they're sort of out the back in rougher areas. You don't know what you're going to come across. Um, so having that Kevlar line tire is, is a real time saver. You just don't want to be repairing oh, yeah. punches all your life, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, great. I mean, again, I mean, the features that the, the thought you've put into the design is incredible. There's a roller back here, though, that I see on the bottom side. What's the purpose of that? Yeah, so that is standard on all three series. So it's it's an anti-scalp roller. Okay. So you, it's not designed to run on the roller all the time. But say if you're if you're traveling along and you had a and a rut or a, a trench where your wheel marks in boggy ground had, had, had um, created a big rut, rut or something, and your oh, wheel yeah. drops down in and your blades are going, um, then it's gonna it's gonna ride on the roller and it protects the rotor. Yeah. And it stops it scalping into the ground. Okay, Jake, I, I see. Some zerks down here. Yeah, I've seen them on a couple other spots too. So let's talk about maintenance. What are folks looking at? What are they getting into? What do they got to expect to maintain one of these mowers, keep it in good working order? Yeah, so it's very straightforward and simple. All right, so you've got, you've got uh, five grease zerks on the machine, um, two for the rotor, so one at each end. Yep. Uh, nice and accessible just here. The other side is behind the belt guard, but that's nice and easy to take off. Then you've got the rear roller, so one on each end, sure. accessible both sides, and then just one up here on the height adjustment. Okay. So, yeah. so, so simple. And I mean, that's maybe once a month. You just as long as it's running nice and yeah. easy, then you're, you're, you're fine. Yep. Um, so that's grease zerks. You've got the belts and you've got the blades. Um, so obviously with the blades, you want to just check the, check the condition of them, make sure nothing's broken, nothing's damaged. Yeah. Um, you don't want to, if you've got a missing blade, you want to make sure you replace it so that sure. the machine is running smooth. If you feel like it's, vibrating then it's probably for a reason and it's, pro <laughs> yeah. it's probably because you've lost a blade or something like yeah, that so yeah. get that get that replaced but yep. um yeah uh, just check your tire pressures once in a while just make sure they're not um uneven mm -hmm. uh, but and that your belts so you um they, they will last a good while um one thing with the afe it has a centrifugal clutch system on the side so you want to run it at full revs all of our atv mowers you want to run them at full revs okay because that's your optimum working speed yep. yeah um so just listen to the mower when you're when you're using it listen to the mower listen to its engine revs if you're going through long material and it's you can hear the engine revs start to drag down you just need to slow slow off up a little bit okay. let the engine catch up and then you're fine yeah All right, so just it's just listening to the machine well really common sense yeah <laughs> yeah now you talked about uh, the centrifugal bleh, centrifugal 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 clutch. clutch. Sorry. Words are hard for me sometimes. Now, this has a different setup on the AFR series. Maybe the AFX or just yeah, the AFR? Yeah, the AFX and the AFR. Okay, okay. Yeah. Tell us about that. Okay, so I explained, I mean, on the, a, on the AFE, you've got a centrifugal clutch system, which is common pretty much across any other machine on the market. They have these centrifugal clutches. So you just got to listen to it. Make sure you, make sure you slow down if it's, if it's struggling, right? So 
at the, if you don't slow down, you could have pro problems with your belts. Yeah. Um, the difference here, and let me just come around. So you've got this, this engagement lever. So the engine's rub it, running, um, and then you literally just take this lever, just unlatch it, and then as you push it down, that's engaging your, your, your belts to the blade, and then you can just lock it in there. So the difference there is that if you're going through really long, dense uh, brambles or something that's um, putting a lot of load on the, on the engine, yeah. um, the worst that could happen is that you then go and stall your engine. You go too fast through it and you stall your engine. You're not going to slip your belts. Yep. So you don't start to get the squealing and smoking and things like that, yep. which you've got to be going something to make that happen. <laughs> so we've, we've, been, we've been doing this system for a good 25 years and it's, it's very well proven, okay. strong. All right, Jake, uh, we have three different series of foil mowers. Let's, let's give the folks uh, differences. You know, if you get the, the entry level, you have the, the medium duty, the professional or high end level, whatever you want to call it there. Let's show the differences or talk about what you get with each series of mower. Yeah, so the reason why we've had, we've got three different mowers is because there's so many applications out there, there's different budgets as well, right? Yeah. So the AFE is what we, I suppose our entry level, okay. um, entry level machine. And then the AFX is our medium, medium duty and the AFR is heavy duty, very yeah. heavy duty. Yeah. Um, so what you'd have on an AFE is a 13 horsepower recall start engine. Okay. Um, with your centrifugal clutch system on the side. Yep. Okay, so great machine, good good price point as well. Uh, it will take out grass this long, no problem, hmm. right? So wow. it's, it's, a, it's a great unit and it, it's very competitive against other machines with all its features it comes with as well against the other machines on the market um, and other options. Um, but then if you go from AFE to AFX, you go up to an 18 horsepower engine and then you have Although it's a recall start as well, it's a it, it, you you have a um, electric start with it as well. So you've actually got the choice of okay. pulling it <laughs> yep. or key start. Yep. And then going up to the AFR, you have 23 horsepower, which is a beast. Oh yeah. Um, also with it has electric start and recall. Okay. So 13, 18, 23 horsepower engines. Yeah. Okay. So uh, obviously we mentioned it before. We've got two different widths on each of these different options, right? So we've got 48 and 60 inch yep. cutting widths. Yep. I mentioned about the drive systems, obviously just to make that clear. So it's centri centrifugal clutch mm -hmm. and then the AFX is where then it goes to a lock torque drive system. Okay. Like we spoke about just now okay. and the AFR also has that system as well. Okay, so we have different blades that are on each of these mowers here. Tell us what's available on each series. If there's options, what are we looking at? Yeah, so the, um, the AFE and the AFX both come standard with like a back-to-back -back Y flail. Okay. So they're great for mulching up, mulching up grass. Um, they give a good mulch. But if you want to go for a, um, a heavy-duty sort of hammer blade, yeah. we do a, like a pressed steel version, okay. which will fit on the AFX as an optional extra. Okay. Okay. Um, and then as you go up to the AFR, this has a bigger diameter rotor. It has a big, heavy cast hammer flails. Hmm. So it's another level again. So yeah. that when you're going through real heavy duty applications, thicker yeah. diameter, um, then you've, you've got that weight to it, which will take it through the, okay. that dense, that makes dense sense. vegetation. And that's, I mean, that's all the AFR comes with. That's all it comes with. Just those heavy duty hammers. All right. That's right. That's like for the most severe duty. Yeah. It'll handle whatever you can do. So that's it. And, cool. and all three, all of these mowers have like a spiralized design on their, uh, the blade pattern. So okay. that helps with the engagement. If you're going through long material, it, it helps to take the strain off the engine. Uh, so there's one other difference that I'm at least visually noticing up here on the front, this red bar going across. Yeah, this is what we call our boss bar. So it comes standard on the AFR uh, premium end. Okay. So, yep. And that just kind of helps drive material down underneath the mower? That's right. Okay. Yeah, so it pushes over, pushes over long, uh, thicker material. All right. Just push it over rather than dragging on the skirt. That's, this, uh, this yep. rubber yep. section on the front, it helps push it over and get it into the mower. All right, Jake, so we do have this uh, wound up, this cord wound up here. Looks a little bit different than what we had going on there. What's, what's this button for? Yeah, so this, this uh, unravels obviously, and then you, you have it again attached to where you're, where you're sat. Okay. Um, and that is basically a safety kill switch. So the scenario, right, so you're going through long, long growth and then you come across something that's 
tree stump or something like that and mm. you think, oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> I need to kill that off pretty fast. So you hit yeah. the red button and that will kill the engine. The other yeah. thing as well is it's a bit like a, uh, so this, this is a, again, a safety feature. You can wrap that around you. What we don't want is people falling off the quad bike and then, oh, yeah. and then, then it's still traveling. Wow. So actually this would, if this pulls off, let me just get this here. If that unclips like that, then that will kill it anyway. That's interesting. That's a good feature right there. I never thought about it. Because this, yeah, I mean, it's not like a, a tractor, you know. Uh, there's no key just to turn it off or something right there. This is this is on back behind you. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great safety feature to have. Now, a couple of things, Jake, that I noticed, okay, looking at specs and things like that. Number one, you have the 48-inch, which there's some competition out there for the 48-inch category, right? I don't think they have nearly these kinds of features. But then you have the 60-inch width. Is there any competition out there? Like who else makes a 60 inch pull behind Flowmore? It's a, it's in a league of its own. It's yeah, it's the it's the biggest one out there. Yeah. As far as I'm aware. I mean someone might tell me different, but right. yeah, as far as I'm aware and we've been in this world for a while, it's the biggest biggest unit out there. So actually if you're if you if your area that you're cutting is is it's quite a big open area, um, then it's it's worthwhile look, taking a look at yeah. a bigger unit. Yeah, definitely. But along those lines, if you look at the weights of these units, these things, I mean, I hope they look beefy here. I mean, I'm, I'm six foot three on a good day. There's not gonna be any arguments about that. And this is, I mean, this is big. I'm standing next to this thing. I'm 200 pounds. It's just big. It's beefy. These mowers weigh the smallest one. There weighs like 570 pounds right around yep. there. And then the AFR, the 60 inch weighs 750 pounds. All right. So there is a lot of steel, a lot of weight here, but at the same time, there's not a lot of load that's being put on your ATV is rolling along the ground, it's self-powered, so even a smaller machine can pull these along, right? Yeah, so if you're on flat ground, all you need is enough power to pull it along. And I mean, you, you could actually lift this up and pull it along yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we suggest you doing that, <laughs> but that's, you don't need a lot of power to pull it. Um, okay, you add in a few inclines in the hillside and things like that, okay, you might, you're probably not gonna need a, 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 some more horsepower to more. pull it. Yeah. Um, but because, it's the unit itself that's powering the, the rotor, um, and it, that's dealing with its cutting conditions itself. So you don't need a, a bigger tractor just because you've got really long grass to deal with, because yep. it's done, yep. it's powered itself. <laughs> yep, that's pretty awesome. Well, folks, I think that just about wraps it up. What else should they know, Jake? Anything else they need to know about one of these mowers? Yeah, well, if you're, if you're buying one, uh, which we hope you've been excited enough to, to, to look at it seriously, uh, so this, these machines, they come in like a me metal crate. So when you receive it, it will come in a metal crate that the axles actually themselves will be, um, they'll be, they'll be off, they'll be, they'll be bolted into the crate. So it's just a case of taking the axles off, bolting them on, okay. which there's instructions here. So step-by-step -step instructions. So you bolt your axles on, you bolt your wheels on, um, and then you bolt your draw bar on, okay. and then you're pretty much good to go. But just to help you through that process, we have a couple of videos on YouTube, so check them out. Um, there's an unpacking and assembly video, and then there's a operations and maintenance video. So just check those out, and that will help you step by step through through the process, and just make sure you're you're not missing anything. Um, hopefully that yeah, will help very you. Very good. That's really helpful. I mean, I, you know, I was just putting together a soccer goal the other day. And there were no videos out there, and that thing took me forever. So you know, if there was just a video. I could have done it so much quicker, so that's really nice to have. Well, Jake, I really want to thank you for making the trip over here. It was really great to see you. Thanks for all the information, too. Looking forward to working with you. These are beautiful mowers, beautiful pieces of equipment here. I think we got a bright future. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Courtney, and it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, definitely, Looking definitely. Looking forward to it. And folks, if you want to get more information, if you're interested in getting pricing on these mowers, just go to goodworkstractors.com or tractortools.com. That'll get you to the same place. You know what, you can use these. If you have a a tractor and an ATV, you can use a tool like this on both machines. So if you want to get some versatility, some more bang for the buck, if one machine goes down and you still need to get mowing done, well, guess what? This goes on either type of machine. So consider that, all right? Consider that. Tractortools.com, goodworkstractors.com, you name it. We're happy to help you out. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye.